Yeah, man. It's just, you know, it's, you know, we were, you know, playing as, as good as we, you know, we're peaking at the right time and, um, you know, and then this COVID hit, man, it, it was kind of devastating because, you know, I have 14 new guys and, you know, when you have 14 new players, it takes a minute to jail. And the good thing about those guys was they stayed the course, even when we were struggling, they knew that we had something. Once we got it down, we were going to be really good. And man, they stayed the course. We started rolling and all of a sudden, man, this COVID hit and we had to stop in our tracks. And it was one of the toughest things I ever had to do was go in that locker room and say, man, the season's over with. And all this time and effort and work we did and the success we were having, you know, is, is done. And we're not going to have anything to show for it. And, yeah, Coach, I know around that time, man, you know, for I know I was with, in, in March, I was with the Hawks. That's my birthday. When everything shut down in the NBA. So, you were you all in Birmingham when that, when that all went down? Had you already played your first round game and heading to Birmingham when you had to tell those guys it was over? We had won our first game at home against uh, Alabama State. And then uh, we were on the road, man. We were uh, – Shoot, right in the, you know, miss, right in the, just got into Mississippi, man, and got the call saying we had to turn around. Man, I know that was tough for those young men. And, you know, Coach, uh, let, I saw last year, man, you know, you had to pretty much go back to your way of playing ball because I know how you play from your days at Moorhead State. You know, you was playing short rotations. That's not true. You played 19, 11 guys, and then at one point you said, I'm going to go back to being what I do, do what I do. And so how did you guys respond to you saying, hey, we can play in my way. We're going to do it the way I've done it all this time. And when they finally got it, and won that run you guys went on there. Well, what happened was, you know, we went on a six-game winning streak after we lost our first three uh, conference games. And uh, guys still weren't happy when we were winning. But I, I shortened the rotation. So I told them after the Jackson State game, we got beat at Jackson State. I said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to playing my ball. I said, and that's, that's, you know, playing a lot of guys, but we're going to play at a pace that's unlike anything that we played that we're going to play against. And if you guys can get it, everybody plays. If you don't get it, I'm playing the ones that's getting it. I'm going back to the seven, eight, nine man rotation. Man, every time I sub somebody, I never missed a beat. Them dudes was ready, man. And everybody was involved in the success that we were having. So the locker room, the bench was, man, everybody was just waiting for their turn, knew they was going to get it. And when you got, you know, 12, 13 dudes, man, know they're going to play and play significantly and, be, you know what I mean, and have fun doing it, it's hard to stop that, man. And uh, that's what happened. And, you know, it, it was tough the way it had to end. But the good thing is we really only lost two players. And uh, we got pretty much everybody back. We got almost 90% of our scoring back. So we're just hoping that we can get started again, man, and kick this thing off and continue what we, you know, what we had going uh, last year, last season. And their coach, you know, like I said, you know, like you said, when guys know they're going to play, they're going to be engaged in practice, shoot arounds, you know, timeouts, because, you know, guys, they, the main thing they just play, but you know, playing for you. You got to defend like hell, play with Sean Wood. So give them the bind defensively, then play that ball offensively, transition easy for you guys. Exactly. And they, we were locking people down, man. I mean, holding teams under 40 percent, out rebounding them, double figures. You know, we were just getting it. And uh, I didn't care who I put in. I wasn't going to produce and they did it. And it was just a, a real refreshing and gratifying, gratifying situation as a coach. And, uh, you know, I, I hopefully we can do that again with these new guys that we brought in. Well, Coach, you got five newcomers, one of them being your son. You got some a JUCO guys, some transfer guys. So tell us about, about your five new guys, and especially how has it been to coach your son, Deshaun? Up? Well, I haven't been able to do much. We had a week of practice because we didn't get started until after Labor Day. And then we had two guys test positive, so we're just now starting back today, man. I'm heading back to the office right now. Can't wait to be able to start back today. So – uh, hopefully that, you know, that was a bump in the road and we don't have any more of those. And uh, I'm just excited, man, to, to, to get started again. You know, I haven't been able to touch them as much. So hopefully now this is the start of something. But, you know, the two big guys, Harrison Henderson and, and uh, Andre Allen, you know, have a chance to be really, really good. Both of them are skilled. Andre Allen is super athletic. Can be, a, you know, a force, especially offensive rebounding. 
Uh, Harrison is more of a like a Brad Doherty type. I don't know if you remember him. He's played in North Carolina. I do. Real, sm real smooth, you know, nice, sweet jump shot, skill, can pass, you know. And then uh, we got uh, the, 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 we got Andre Torre, who's a transfer from, from Howard, who's on the Russian national team, man, the, the, the actual national team. And he's as talented as 6'8 as you can get. We're very blessed to get him. And then we got Sam Kalo, who's from uh, Eastern Oklahoma Junior College, who's a Sean Woods type of guy, a, a junkyard dog. Uh, and then my son, who knows me, you know what I mean, as a point guard. So that's going to make the right play and, do you know, do the things that, you know, you need to do. So I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm looking forward to coaching my son, looking forward to coaching all these guys. And the thing about my son is there's no pressure because I got everybody back. So he ain't got to come in and, you know, do nothing extraordinary, no pressure on him, just come in, fit in, and do what he does. And then, you know, when these guys leave, you know, he'll, you know, have some experience with some guys he'll be playing with, and the future's bright. So, you know, Southern basketball, man, is, you know, it ain't going to look back for a while because we got things in place. And as long as we continue to recruit, you know, Sean Woods type of guys, man, we're always going to be in the mix. Well, I knew it at that first year, okay, first year transition year. I knew it was gonna be a bad year for you, but last year I saw it. I said, "Yep, he got he got the mixture right." And this year, the five guys you got, you guys to me are favorites in the swag. I don't want to put the pressure on you, but I feel like you guys got the nucleus already there, plus five new guys who can plug right in there. You guys got a squad this year, coach, for real. I'm I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's the only thing is I never had, I didn't get a you know the summertime makes me. People don't understand my season is predicated on the summer. We didn't get a summer this year because of COVID. You know what I mean? So now oh, I'm rushing I'm rushing to get some, you know, uh, player development in before we start going banging and slanging because you don't want to go in and hit them real hard and injuries start to plague you a little bit. So I'm trying to be smart about it and take my time, but knowing that I got something. And all it is just really acclimating these new guys into what we already got. Uh, and once that happens, man, you know, because all the new guys pretty much are the guys with size. So once they get it, you know what I mean, hopefully we can, you know, instead of us having that finding our way at the beginning of the year, we can already be there, you know what I'm saying, and continue to get better because we will still get better even though we were winning and, having to, and, 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 and beating people by double figures. We were still getting better. We hadn't peaked yet. So that was the scary thing, you know what I'm saying, well, that our, our ceiling is so daggone high. That I'm just trying to continue to get there, you know. But <laughs> yeah. this thing stopped me, man. And I'm, 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 well, I've been going crazy. You know, I can't touch my guys. You know what I'm saying? So oh, definitely. now I'm like a bull in a china shop. You know, now that I got them, and uh, I'm rushing over here as I'm talking to you to get to them, and hopefully this thing can continue. You know, <laughs> most definitely. And you know what, man? You know what's so great about it is like the summertime. Like the guys should be very fresh because you, you couldn't really work them out and run them. So you know, you, you young men, how, did you all have on like a little plan at home for us doing something in the yard and how to kick it to young men from kind of not being so far out of shape when you get them now? We're like, oh, my God, I got to start from scratch. So how did that go for you guys with the, with the strength coach there? Well, we can do nothing. You know what I'm saying? The strength coach couldn't touch them, couldn't do nothing. So I really had them really doing old school stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? Push-ups and sit-ups and getting running in. You know, that was the only thing we really could do because of this deal. You couldn't go to gyms you know, to, to get you a, a good workout in. So we just try to do the best we could with what we had. And thank God that we got guys that really want to be good. So they, you know, they didn't have to be motivated to do it. And they did what they supposed to do for the most part while they were gone. And, uh, and um, so they came back, man, in the first couple of days, I'm going to say, man, these dudes out of shape, you know, practice, you know, these workouts are going to be bad, man. Them workouts were good. You know, they was, they answered the bell. They, it was tough. They were sore, but, man, they answered the bell. These dudes, you know, they, it's like you, 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 you dude been hungry for the whole life. You put a, you put a nice-looking plate on this table, and he's starting to eat it. And all of a sudden, you come back and take the plate, plate away? What do you think how, you, how that kid going to feel? That's how my guys feel right now. Most definitely. And for you, man, recruiting uh, recruiting for the next class here, how's that going via Zoom all this time? Man, I know you a guy, a little guy to build relationships, face, 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 face kind of a guy, but how's it trying to do build relationships and recruit via Zoom this, this time around? Did it help you expand your reach because you had to waste the budget to travel this time last year? Well, I tell you what, you know, it, it, it makes things uh, a little more equal because even the bigger schools – can't go out and can't visit and all that. So it's pretty much about relationships. 
So you find something, especially you can get a diamond in the rough, especially in your state, because kids are getting desperate now because they didn't get a chance to really sh have a showcase because they didn't get a chance to play in front of no, no, no college coaches. Most so definitely. now you can get a kid that they didn't get to see. You know, no, normally when you offer a kid, you see a kid that's, that's at the mid-major level, you think you got something, and all of a sudden, man, he go to a tournament, blow up, and here come the big guys, the big schools. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, most so that, that, ain't hap that ain't happening now. So, you know, hopefully we can take advantage of this situation because we did take advantage of it, you know what I mean, with the five guys that we got because of COVID. You know what I'm saying? They didn't come in on a visit. We didn't have to compete as much. You know what I mean? So uh, we just, you know, steady staying the course and being becoming more aggressive with this COVID deal because this is where we had to strike. You know what I'm saying? Now, how's it been telling your young men, man, look here, I know you're young, and I know you want to see some girls go out to the mall, shop, so how's it telling them guys to say no when they really want to say yes to certain things, keep them in focus? I know with the team, you had two guys getting getting the virus, the quarantine, so I hope that teach them a little bit of a lesson now that, hey, this thing is real. We got to really, really, really be on our piece of cues always. Well, you know what, man? It's, it's, it's kind of crazy. They have been doing good as a whole for the most part, you know, you could get this thing any type of way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It ain't like they was really – and I'm proud of them because they ain't been wilding, you know. But you can't – you you know, 100% COVID-free on a team is, is, is unrealistic. And, you know, the, the way they got it was just sim being simple. You know what I'm saying? A, a family member brought it to them. Uh, you know, ain't nobody clubbing. Ain't nobody doing none of that. You know what I mean? Because these dudes are focused. And – um. You know, it, it was just an you know, unfortunate situation that happened. And, uh, you know, it set us back a little bit. But now everybody's all tested negative, And hopefully this is the end of it and we can get rolling, man. And now, Coach, for your non-conference schedule, man, you know, I know you pushed y'all back to the 25th. So getting on money games is big for Southern and the, and the SWAT school. So how's it been trying to get in, get in games knowing that you got two weeks kind of taking off before you can make, raise that money that you usually raise non-conference schedule before you get in the SWAT play? Well, we got we got lucky because one of the deals was an MT event, and even though we weren't able to play it at that time, the beginning of the year, we were still able to do it. So now we, are, you know, it's just going to be in a bubble. It's going to be in Iowa uh, at one place, but we still got, you know, we still got to get maybe another game or two in. But for the most part, it didn't devastate us. We didn't miss a lot, but we missed some. And um, you know, everybody now, you're not getting as much money from the bigger schools, but you got to get something to keep your budget going. Yeah, I saw some of them contracts, Coach. They ain't good to me, man. <laughs> that whole COVID clause, man, they, they monkey. I saw well, a few of them. <laughs> well, here, yeah, because here's the deal. You're not getting that much revenue because you're not having fans. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they ain't got that much money to give. That's understandable. You know, I get it. You know, it's unfortunate for us because we depend on that type of deal, you know? Most definitely. Well, that's what I got for you, Coach. This man, uh, everything's going on in the country, man. Getting with George Floyd, all these different Brown Taylor. How are you talking, young men, about being registered to vote this this time around? Getting engaged and realizing we take off that, that Jaguar jersey, man. You a young black man in Louisiana in this in this country. Well, here's the deal, man. You know, all you could do is educate your guys on. You know, if police ever pull you over, you know what I'm saying? Give them respect. You know, don't don't mouth, don't give them any type of reason to do anything to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If, you, if, if you get pulled over, stay in your car. You know, you roll down, you win, yes, sir, no, sir. You know, if I was speeding, sir, I was speeding, I'm sorry. You know, the worst thing you could do is get a ticket. You know what I'm saying? If that's the worst thing out of this day because of all this other stuff going on, man, take that ticket. Pay that $75 or whatever, man, and keep it moving. You should have been speeding anyway. You know what I mean? Yes, so, indeed. So my thing is, man, you know how this, how, how this country is right now. Everybody ain't bad, but you got to select few. That's everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, all of us ain't good. Most definitely. You know? You know, but you just got to stay away from harm's way as much as you can. Use your common sense and get on through life, man. That's why you're here, because you're fortunate. You know what I'm saying? You ain't at the crib, ain't got nothing to do. While your other buddies at the crib, 18, 19, 20, 20 21, 22 years old, ain't found themselves yet. You know, you in a you in a uh, 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 organized situation. You lucky to be playing college basketball, getting an education. You know what I'm saying? So you got this thing 80 percent pegged. Now you just got to take advantage of it, okay, and, and do what you're supposed to do, and then go and educate somebody else and continue to make your family proud, your school proud, your coaches proud, all that type of deal. 
the more you trying to stay positive and do positive things, man, the less you get you, less you, you you get involved with that 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 dumb stuff. And uh, right now, man, that's, that's all I can tell them. You know what I'm saying? You can't you can't be with them 24 hours a day, just like I can't be with my sons at 24 hours a day. You know, but they know what right what wrong and right and wrong is. That's what I recruit. You know what I'm saying? You know, so um, I try to stay away from that dumb stuff. But you know, we all are susceptible to mistakes. And we just got to continue to just be aware of our surroundings. You know, ain't nobody Superman. Just do what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to do it, when you're supposed to do it. And, and, and take advantage of your blessings, man. And, and if you do that, you know what I'm saying, you, 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 you're ahead of the curve as far as getting into a situation that you don't want to be in. Well, Coach, well said, my brother. Coach, I'm going to try to catch you, man, either in Montgomery Huntsville, man. So, let me got to play those guys. Hopefully, catch you one of them dates, man, when you come at the Alabama swing, Coach. No doubt about it, man. You know you, my guy. No doubt, man. Hey, give, give him hell, Coach. Give him hell, man. <laughs> you, I don't know no other way, baby. Don't know no other way. All right, man. Hey, thank you, Coach. Let's do it again real soon, brother. No doubt about it. You know I always. All right, bro. That's Sean Woods on the Boss Man Show. All right.